this New Year's, you're invited to a killer party. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. This is I Hope You Suffer. My name is Nathan. Yeah. And uh, this week we watched the Aquaman. 19... Yeah, we're, we're just talking about Aquaman, even though I haven't seen it, but I don't care. <laughs> Jason Momoa, looking hot. There's a man, he's Aqua-ish. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, we watched New Year's Evil from 1980, and it is terrible. It's, is, it's not even that it's terrible, it's just, it's boring. I, I pretty much immediately was like, I regret watching this. <laughs> it's like a, in Futurama, where I was like, this is boring, Zoidberg, you're boring, and walks away. That's how I felt <laughs> during this movie. I, I literally paused it with 30 minutes left so I could take a fucking nap, because I was so tired, <laughs> and this movie was not doing anything to keep me engaged. I watched it after I got off work and was... I'm so sorry. Immediately just like, god damn it, this is fucking real boring. It's an awful way to unwind. Yeah. Um, Alright, so this movie... When I was looking at, like, like, other credits for, like, the actors and director and all that shit, like... Nothing super interesting for anybody, except for two of them. Uh, the director is Emmett Alston. Uh, he had really nothing I saw of any kind of real importance. Uh, this movie stars Roz Kelly as Diane. Kip Niven as Richard. Uh, Chris Wallace as Lieutenant Clayton. And then to get the Seinfeld uh, tie-in. Uh, Jed Mills is Ernie, who was Joel in the uh, the Fat Free Yogurt episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is a deep cut. <laughs> yes. And then uh, John Green plays Sergeant Green, who was one of the cops in Maniac Cop. Um, but the good tie-in that kind of so... Uh, Grant Kramer plays Derek in this movie, who is Mike Tobacco in Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> but, when I was looking at his credits, he is currently working on the return of the Killer Clowns from Outer Space in 3D. What? Right? They are making a this fucking... A thing? Yes, they are making a Killer Clowns from Outer Space sequel in 3D, and I cannot fucking wait. What the fuck? I had no idea until I saw that. Furiously Googling. (laughs) Uh, On October 22nd, it was announced that Sci-Fi was in talks to acquire the rights to Killer Clouds from Outer Space and the Critters franchise. Fucking very into both of those. I'm extremely down. Let's do this. Killer Clowns is an amazing movie. And usually stuff that gets kind of like rebooted or a sequel like however many years later doesn't live up but I'm fucking 100% Cough, predator, on board. Cough. <laughs> I have not seen a Predator movie since Predator 2 so that's for the best I, I, refuse, <laughs> I refuse to watch Aliens versus Predator oh they're so bad I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make you do Requiem for the podcast <laughs> I actually have like they made, like, novels of Aliens vs. Predator that's, like, not the movies that I have, like, the collection of, but I have not read yet. The video game was super dope. I remember I played the Predator video game that was on, like, PlayStation 2 or some shit. Oh, yeah. That could have been fun, but was not. That sounds like everything related to Predator since <laughs> Predator. 
Predators two. Predator two is. Predator two is fun. I like Predator two. Got Danny Glover being tired of this shit. Um, yeah. So pretty much the only exciting thing from this movie was seeing when there's it... killer clowns from outer space coming again. <laughs> Also, the band in this movie is pretty fucking amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> the and one band that is maybe four bands, but the, it's impossible <laughs> to tell. I have no idea. It's literally like I, like, I was looking at the soundtrack when I was watching it, and it's a majority of it is listed as the band Shadow, which is, I think, what they're referred to in the movie, until they're referred to as Made in Japan. Which is like two of the songs, and it's just fucking real weird. And then they're back to being Shadow, like after that. <laughs> and uh, it, it's like just a wardrobe change, but they're clearly the same people, so it's. I did like, not even notice like, that they changed clothes. Like, that's the same dude, he just doesn't have his weird fucking Star Trek glasses. What? <laughs> like. The. The punks in this playing them in the first place. The punks in this movie were my favorite thing, and it just made me like real nostalgic for like eighty, like Return of the Living Dead, like eighties punk nonsense that like where they just cast like complete randos as these punk characters, but it's like the most ridiculous, over the top like characteristics of like punks. Switchblade comb is all I'm gonna say. Oh, that's the fucking best. Um, so this movie opens with the, the, probably the only good thing besides the band in it is the Canon Films logo. <laughs> <laughs> Canon Films was awesome. Um, I'm not even going to lie. I pretty much forgot everything about this movie. Like, as I finished I'm... it. <laughs> I literally finished it 20 minutes ago, and I could not tell you, like, half the shit that happened in it. So this is going to be fun trying to, like, decipher what any of my notes mean. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first note is, this makeup is something, and I think that was just from, like, Diane putting her makeup on at the beginning. Because that, that makeup was crazy. Something. That was the other thing that fucking, like, infuriated me about this movie, is that, like, the show, like, Diane is hosting this, like, New Year's Eve kind of, like, MTV VJ type show where a band is playing, but, like, it's set up like you think it's gonna be, like, a video countdown, but then it's just this band playing songs, and it's, like, set up as, like, a new wave show, but it's full of, like, punk kids, And then the band is playing, like, a weird... A whole range of things. Yeah, like, the first song is, like, a... like It's like a hair metal kind of, like... Yeah, it's... British heavy metal-inspired type thing. I was gonna say, like, an Iron Maiden or King Diamond-ish thing. But only... I only say King Diamond because the dude's just singing in, like, a high-pitched falsetto the whole time. Which like, a. It reminded me of, like, Fastway. The Fastway soundtrack to Trick or Treat. Yes. Like that kind of it, shit. I'm not. I don't even know why I'm explaining it because you're gonna hear it. I'm putting it in the podcast. Um, Lucky. Yeah, I'm putting it right here. So, right now, go. Yeah.
awesome <laughs> you get to hear that song about 12 times in this fucking movie they get their they they get their uh their money's worth with that if you listen closely it's just playing really quietly in the background of the entire film yeah it, not even quietly it just fucking like it was at least four times it plays like it plays fully during the credits then the first time the band plays they play it and then it kind of just like shows up sporadically because it's just like the theme for the movie. And then it plays again during the credits. Um, then at some point, the band is just like a fucking Stevie Ray Vaughan blues band. Which that that caught me off guard. It fucking broke my brain. It's immediately after the very first song that sounds like hair metal. And they're playing this really slow, like Texas flood sounding Stevie Ray Vaughan jam. And all the punks that were, for some reason, moshing to the hair metal song are now slow dancing to Stevie Ray Vaughan. And it's <laughs> it's so I was crazy. just like, what is, what's happening here? Uh, and it's the same band. This isn't one of the breaks where it's like, oh, Shadow is now made in Japan. They're still the same band, just playing a totally different style of music. I could talk about this fucking band for the next hour. <laughs> Yeah, let's just do the podcast on the band. I don't, fuck the movie. <laughs> it's like everything about the band and then the crowd just like made no sense to me whatsoever and I loved it. It was like the only thing that kept me invested in the movie whatsoever. Because every time they would come back to him, I'm like, what are they going to be now? Like I was just waiting for them to just be like run DMC. And just like <laughs> bust out like some like 80s hip hop and watch all the punks start losing their minds i'm honestly surprised it didn't happen oh god new Year- this <laughs> i'm never gonna fucking forget this theme song it's just gonna be like burned into my brain forever i hope you play it new year's at midnight oh, i'm going to from now on that's my new tradition all day new year's day it's just gonna be on a 24 hour loop there's a there like when I like I was looking up the songs to like record them to put in the podcast and like there was somebody that found fifty versions of this theme song and just has it in like a playlist on YouTube. Why? I don't know. And like and from what I could tell, most of them were just different recordings of like the like the same song, but there's like covers as well. It was real weird. It has to be the director of this movie. Sometimes I don't like horror movies. <laughs> this like almost barely <laughs> counts as a fucking horror movie. I'm scared to watch it again. I mean, like it was maybe a thriller at best. Um, uh, so someone someone got stabbed. That that's all it takes to be a horror movie, right? I guess. A stabbing. I guess in 1980. They apparently had not seen The Exorcist or Halloween or anything good leading up to that. Um, so there's some fucking garbage at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's garbage. What a good lead in. There's garbage for about an hour 26 of there's this some, movie. There's some fucking garbage. I don't know. Shit happens. It's fucking like... Diane getting ready for a show and fucking her friend gets killed and I don't know like a fucking leaky faucet or some garbage it's fucking terrible and punk punk <clears throat> dudes show up at the venue and some guy pulls a switchblade comb on the <laughs> fucking door guy you also get the most fucking obnoxious punks driving in their car and just like fucking harassing other people their cars and drove me crazy <laughs> It's, like, 
I was watching these like the the punks in their car just fucking rocking out to New Year's Evil, and just being like, these kids deserve to get harassed by the cops in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this this movie made me kind of root for the cops, even, which yeah, I can't even be mad at the fucking cops. <laughs> Unbelievable. What have you done to me, New Year's Evil? It rules though when that dude pulls out the pocket switchblade. That cop's just being like a dick about it, like the tickets. <laughs> it's so dumb and like I had the only thing I'd seen um like right before I watched it I saw some other podcast that was like said they were talking about it for you know their New Year's episode and like yeah. the first thing they said was just like you know discussion on pocket combs or switchblade combs and I was like oh shit so as soon as I saw that punk pull out that like switchblade I was like this is definitely going to be a comb and I was not disappointed they ruined it. They ruined the surprise. Um. So after like this fucking four minute opening scene of like the theme song playing and just like punks driving around in their car and coming to this show, uh, you, you get some kind of backstory with Diane and her son Derek. And I just wrote down that Diane is a shitty mom because she's getting ready and Derek is telling her about like some. TV show audition he had that he got the role and she's just like not paying any attention and he gets all emo about it. Uh, then you kind of just cut to the main set piece is this fucking show that Diane is hosting that is introduced again as a new wave show that is full of punk kids that is playing fucking weird blues and heavy metal and I don't, I don't think there's a single fucking new wave song oh no there's not it's like i think they just thought were like like oh well the talking heads were like a new wave band and they played cbgbs and the ramones played cbgbs so when they just turn into made in japan and sound like the ramones everybody will think it's new wave this god damn it this fucking band um <laughs> Uh, so, like, you you just kind of get Diane, like, introducing her show, and it's, they're counting down, like, I don't know, I guess it's supposed to be the year's best New Wave songs for New Year's Eve. It's essentially just, like, a low-rent version of, like, Dick Clark's rockin' New Year's Eve, where, like, this band is playing, and, but they're, I think, I think they're supposed to be in California, which I think so, based no, on the way the time zones are set up. Yeah, it made no sense to me because it 100% looks like it's in New York. Yeah, it does and, not look like California. But then once it gets all to like the time zone shit, I was like, okay, this has to be California. But um, they're kind of counting down for every time zone, because I guess this is a show that is all over the country. And there's a phone bank for some reason that I don't understand, like, almost like when you see those, like, charity shows where, like, people call in to donate money, there's just, like, people calling in to, like, talk about songs, I don't fucking know, but some guy calls in with the world's worst voice modulator, (laughs) so good, that literally just looks like a fucking, um, like, one of those droppers for, like, medicine, like, it just looks like I, he's got one of those in his mouth. The The first time I saw it, I legit thought he just had, like, a cell phone, like, holding it in his mouth. Like, you know, if a speaker's playing music and you put it in your mouth and it makes, like, the weird wow, wow, wow sound. It's not, and then I was like, wait, this was, like, 30 years before cell phones like that were a thing. What the fuck? And it literally, like, all he's doing is he's just going like this. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Diane. <laughs> it's fucking evil. I assume Wes Craven saw this movie and was like, I gotta make Scream. <laughs> and he just sat on it for <laughs> 30 <deep>. years. <laughs> yeah. I guess it'd probably be about 25 ish years. Like, his Scream was probably like 95, 94, maybe. Scream is a much better movie than this. Yes. Um. So this guy calls with this fucking voice modulator and basically 
says that he's going to kill somebody that she loves, which, as far as I could tell, never happens. Because she never loved anyone. (laughs) As far as I could tell, like, all of the murders in this are fucking random. Yeah, just all totally random people. Um, But essentially, it boils down to that he is going to kill one person and record it for at midnight for every time zone in America. So there's going to be four people he's going to kill at least. And he just kind of like, it's basically set up that he kills somebody, records it and calls back and plays it for. And it's very dumb. It is the worst plot for a quote unquote slasher movie. I think I've ever seen. I mean, I don't know what the hell else you do for a New Year's themed slasher I mean, like, movie. I think the idea of like the time zone thing could be interesting. I think the way they set it up of like recording it and playing it back for her or whatever was just kind of dumb. I think it should have been that he travels to every time zone and kills somebody somehow. <laughs> that would have been incredible. <laughs> Just hops a fucking plane every time. Kill somebody at the airport. Or, you want a really good horror New Year's themed uh, horror movie? What you do is you just have a Tremors movie set on New Year's. <laughs> Boom. Done. I would fucking buy that movie. Sign Unless me. Jamie Kennedy is still fucking in it for some reason. <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot Jamie uh, Kennedy I, was a thing that existed. I, I, I digress. <laughs> Well, you could even just do some kind of weird, like, I don't like, not necessarily time traveling, but like a monster that can, like, travel quickly that's just, like, traveling time zones or some shit. I don't know. You could do something with this New Year's theme. The one kind of interesting thing I saw, like, trivia-wise, is that this movie used to get, like, double billed a lot with Christmas Evil during, uh, like, for, like, like, drive-in double bills. Yeah. Which would be... Um, naturally. Yeah. Which also ties into the drive-in later in this movie that also infuriated me to no end. <laughs> um, so there's just a bunch of fucking garbage scenes of Shadow playing New Year's Evil again. All these punk kids slam dancing. And you cut to the killer at a sanitarium and immediately just like gross flirts with this fucking nurse. And it is real uncomfortable and gross. I did not enjoy it. Nope. (laughs) At least it wasn't racist? Yeah, that's the one thing I can say about this movie is that minus basically everybody in it being white, it's not... There was no overt <laughs> racism. <laughs> I think I saw like one like African American punk in like the crowd and pretty much the entire rest of the movie is just middle aged white people. I don't think I saw anyone who wasn't white in this film. There's Oh, in the elevator at the end. The guy in the elevator, like the punk dude in the elevator was an African American guy. That was like the oh. Only... One one dude in an elevator. Yep. Crushing it. New Year's Evil. At least they had, like, an African-American punk guy. It's gonna have, like, some sort of representation in punk, I guess. Even though he was probably there for the new wave. <laughs> um, so... Oh, this movie's so dumb on so many levels. <laughs> oh, we haven't even made it, like, ten minutes into the movie yet. And, like, literally nothing, nothing else happens in this movie. So, the killer's at this sanitarium and fucking flirts with this nurse to get her to go back to, like, a back room. They start fucking making out and dancing to uh, the the sound of the, like, countdown of New Year's Eve. And at midnight, he records, he hits, like, record on his fucking weird... Uh, portable radio tape deck thing and 
pulls out like a fucking switchblade and starts stabbing her. Kills, As one does. Yeah, kills her. And you immediately cut back to Diane's show where Shadow is now a fucking blues band. Because I just wrote, what the fuck is this punk blues nonsense? It, it, like, I would say if you could even, if you could find the scenes of just, like, the bands, like, I assume if you look on YouTube, you could maybe find the scenes of the band playing. Those are worth watching. Everything else, just, just not even, don't even watch it. Um, the killer calls back, and it's just like, hey, this is to prove I'm serious, plays, like, the recording, the cops get involved and show up. They're all dicks, as most cops are. And I'm the one I'm shocked. Yeah, uh, they kind of show up and they're just like, well, "What do you expect? Look at your audience, these goddamn punk kids." Um, I think this is when you get the scene of Derek in the hotel room taking a bunch of pills. Yes. Because I get, like, after after the killer tells Diane that he's going to kill someone she loves, she, like, calls the hotel room to, like, check on Derek, and he's just being fucking real weird. And it was just like, I had something important to show you or something or a surprise to give you, and then, like, hangs up on her and just takes a fucking bunch of pills that... You never find out what they are. As far as I could tell, didn't do anything. Like, I thought maybe he was killing himself, but, like, nope. Like, just Advil or some shit. I'm assuming it was some sort of, like, Pepto-Bismol because it was pink. He, he keeps that up, you know, every day for the next 30 years. He's going to ruin his intestines. Oh, my God. I just fucking... <laughs> I just read a quote that I wrote down from the fucking... <laughs> From the nurse thing. Um, they, when they're like flirting and like they go back to the back room, she's like, well, hold on. I've only known you for 10 minutes. And the killer says, does it matter? And she's like, tonight? No. What? <laughs> so apparently on New Year's Eve, she is fucking good to go. Whoever, whenever. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, You get some uh, pretty sick stage diving from the crowd while the band is playing. That is, like, they're just basically jumping off a step that's, like, like higher than the floor back onto the floor, and it's real terrible. Um, Another nurse stumbles across the nurse that was just killed. Basically, it looks like she got stabbed, like, once. There's, like, no real gore. Or, like, it's, like, the most generic, like, cave art special effect you could buy. Um, you cut to a scene of Derek putting, like, cutting apart, like, stockings and putting them on his face. And then putting, like a nail through them that looks like it's through his ear for like an earring it is real fucking bizarre yeah just straight up like drives it through his earlobe and like is just rubbing the blood on his neck for some reason he also is like licking the stockings before he puts them on it is real creepy he also oddly very upset (laughs) he also I've never been that upset in my life he kind of looked like Mark Ruffalo with the stockings over his face, and it weirded me out. Because <laughs> I just wanted him to, like, turn into the Hulk and, like, rip out of him. Now, that would have been a plot twist. <laughs> if this was just some kind of weird, like, backdoor Hulk movie. Yeah, an Avengers prequel. <laughs> um, so, Derek's being a fucking weird creep, and again, you never really find out what his deal is, per se. As far as I could tell, it's just because, like, his mom sucks, so he's just, like, a fucking weirdo. And I guess they do, like, they kind of maybe set up that there could possibly be a sequel, like, later. 
but that apparently never happened. Probably because this movie made zero money, I'm assuming. You cut to the killer again after his phone call to prove that like he was killing people. And I th- basically, like when he calls back, he plays the recording and it's just like, tell the police this is where the body's at. They'll find her. Just, you know, this proves that I wasn't making it up. And the cops find this nurse... And you cut to the killer putting on a fake mustache and going into a disco. Which this His mustache is so good. It is His pretty fake awesome. Mustache. I don't know why he didn't have a mustache the whole time because it pretty much set off I his look. Either. He had that like perfect like late seventies, early eighties like He's Sarah a porno. Fawcett hair and is he he would have fucking he'd have been a lady killer with that mustache, I guess. He he is a man who films pornography on the weekends, <laughs> and during the week he owns a roller rink. What? <laughs> that is how I would describe his look. That's pretty accurate. I would have said if it's not a roller rink, like a used car dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> it's just combined. Um. So, the killer shows up at this disco and starts flirting with this lady that was extremely annoying. And, in which, like, while he's at this disco, you kind of cut back and forth between him and then, like, the Diane show. And this is when you get Shadow, who is now called Made in Japan. Made in Japan. Playing a fucking amazing punk song called Dumb Blonde that I'm putting in here and it rules I could not make out all of the lyrics, but as far as I could tell, it's just a song about how blondes are dumb. Per the title, it is fucking pretty ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if you've picked up on the string of misogyny in this movie so far. <laughs> what are you Exclusively saying? murdering all of these women and being super creepy <laughs> in the way they hit up the dudes hit on the women, and now a song called "Dumb Blondes." <laughs> Oh, it's so good. This song is awesome. It, uh... It's just so weird that, like... Again, this fucking band has gone from... A weird, like, new wave of British heavy metal song... To a blues song, and now they're just like a fucking punk band. Uh, you Which can, makes the most sense. You can actually, like, on Spotify... This song is not on there, but if you look up Made in Japan... You can find like a seven inch from the band, like the band made in Japan, that has like a a picture from the movie on the cover, but it does not have this song. Unfortunately, but everything you just said is confusing. <laughs> um, so the killer is back at this disco and he's trying to pick up this lady, who. When they go to leave, she's like, well, my friend's coming with me because you don't expect me to just, like, leave with some random stranger by myself, do you? And the killer is just kind of like, um, okay, I guess. They get in his car, and this lady immediately starts talking to the killer about transcendental meditation and her friend's nervous diarrhea. Which <laughs> <laughs> did legitimately make me laugh. And, like, the killer is visibly, like, 
frustrated because he's got like a couple minutes to make this kill at midnight and he's got these two ladies in his car and he can't get to wherever he was going in time. So he pulls over at like a liquor store, sends the friend in to go to the bathroom and buy champagne and the girl the girl's like, Oh, her nervous diarrhea must be back. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, uh, I'm going to start a punk band called Nervous Diarrhea. Incredible plot point. Yes. The only good plot point in this movie. Any movie. (laughs) So when uh, the girl goes in, like her friend goes in, he suffocates this lady with a plastic bag in his car. The, uh... Then leaves a trail of her, like, shoes and, like, parts of her clothes leading to a dumpster that her friend finds and follows. Opens the dumpster and the killer fucking jumps out. Dun dun. Which fucking, like, this is some, like, very detailed planning on how he's gonna kill both these ladies that he just hid in the dumpster to scare the other one jump out at her. He uh, kills what, her. What if she like never looked at the dumpster? What if she just like walked right by it? Well, like, I, that... you, like if I don't even think I would do a double take if I just saw like a shoe in the, on the ground in like Los Angeles or fucking New York City. Like I, I would just like, oh, do that shoe. anywhere. <laughs> like there's a shoe in the parking lot at work. I'm like whatever. Someone lost a shoe. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I just, I just, sorry, one shoed person out there. I just, to, I just have like a picture of you like coming across like a coworker at some point and be like, "Oh, you're missing a shoe." Hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. I'd be together like three hours later, like, "Oh, that was their shoe." <laughs> you're like laying in bed later that night, but like, "Oh, that makes so much sense." <laughs> so the killer kills these two women. Um displays them in a fucking playground which was real weird like one of them is just like strung up in like a swing and the other one's just set up to perfectly fall down a slide at the most opportune time and like when a cop finds her purse uh he calls the show so hard to get caught yeah well you also find out that he is fucking crazy at the end so well (laughs) <laughs> I guess there's that. He calls back and, you know, plays his fucking tape for uh, for Diane. And then immediately dresses up as a priest. And gets harassed by a bunch of bikers while he's driving. And then crashes into one of them. And immediately, like, takes off and gets chased by these bikers into a drive-in that is... Playing a movie called Blood Feast, which is not Blood Feast, which infuriated me. <laughs> like it's at least it's playing at least like a trailer, I guess, for what is supposed to be Blood Feast with f- footage that is not from Blood Feast. Um, there is a you cut to a car in this drive-in with a girl getting felt up by her boyfriend and smoking weed. You get the killer, like, hiding from these bikers, eventually, like, leaves his car to try and run away, gets confronted by the biker he hit, and the killer, like, stabs him in the gut with a switchblade, and then... After, after saying that he's a man of, uh, a man of love and not a man of violence. Yes. <laughs> he, um, comes across the car with this girl getting felt up, steals it and kidnaps the girl... And as they're driving, you get, like, real uncomfortable scene of the girl, like, begging for her life that goes on for a while and bum me out. Yeah. Like, they, they played, like, they played that scene entirely too long for this movie. For as, like, dumb and... Of its hour and a half runtime, it was at least, you know, an hour and ten minutes of it. (laughs) Uh, I would have almost respected it if it was that. They just fucking like leaned into it so hard. But like, it's, it's just weird because it's like this movie. 
is supposed to be like I, I guess taken seriously, but it is kind of goofy with just like the general plot. And then you have this just weird scene of kind of re- like what seems like real life, like begging and like being like, "I don't have any money. Please don't hurt me." She's like, "If you're trying to like fuck me, like I will fuck you. Just don't kill me. Like I just don't want to get murdered." That's awful. Yeah. Uh, they eventually, like, as he's driving, looking for someone to, like, pull over to murder her, he almost smashes into a bunch of drunks out partying at this park that, like, there's, like, this fucking empty park that just these two people covered in, like, fucking streamers and confetti goes walking into the street. She books it out of the car, and the killer, like, gives chase. She hides kind of... I guess under under something near these bleachers, because he's just, like, tapping on these bleachers with his fucking switchblade forever. The drunks that almost got hit by his car, like, these cops show up. They point out where he ran to. The cops show up just as he's getting ready to find her, and the girl does not get murdered. The cops save her. So there was no kill at this midnight. So he has immediately failed in his task. He, uh. The cops, you cut back to Diane's show, and the cops are now addressing the punks who are all booing them. And one guy says, We don't want to hear any shit from some pigs. Which, Hero. I, I, yes. Hero of the film. The only good person in this movie. Um. The cops are basically just like, the place is on lockdown. If you leave, you're not going to be able to get back in. They've put together that, like, they... It's an okay deal, because, I mean, that place seemed real shitty. Yeah. I would not want to be there either. Not Um, at all. I think, like, the cops at this point, I guess, have put together, or at least what they assume is that, like, the last kill at, like, you know, Los Angeles' time zone is going to be Diane. So, the cops aren't letting anybody in the building. They, for some reason, state that, like, the killer, his trademark is that he's mutilating these women's breasts, which you have not seen at all in this movie. Like, that is never... I think think one of the, like, two that he killed, like, in the dumpster, it wasn't mutilated, but she had, like, a knife wound, like, in her chest, like... But, I mean, that's just where your heart would be. Like, she was just stabbed in the heart. Yeah, I noticed that. Know? But, like, that's all. I, I just assumed that, like, yeah, stabbed her. Yeah, they exactly. Like, it's like, that, that's the only thing remotely like that was someone got stabbed in the heart. But yeah, they give this, like, spiel about he probably, so probably somebody with, like, mo- like, mother issues and He's mutilating these women, but really all he's doing is I think he, like, slit the first lady's, like, throat. And, like, if, like the other two, he just, I don't know, one lady he fucking, like, smothers with a fucking plastic bag, and the other lady, I guess, just gets stabbed in the heart. It's a weird plot point that just does not... These cops are very bad at their jobs. <laughs> they don't even know what's happening. Or the director had no idea what he was doing. Uh, or the writer. Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the killer shows up at the building the TV show is being filmed in. Yell, like, is trying, like, he realizes he can't get in. He's still dressed up as the priest. And goes into, like, this underground parking garage that has an entrance. Sees cops guarding the door. Yells that there's some drunk... He just yells something about a drunk, and the cops come over. Like, one cop comes over to see what's going on, and the killer smashes him in the head with a brick. Um, (laughs) My next note was just, I am baffled by this band, because I'm assuming they just did something else. Probably playing a country western song at this point, I don't remember. Uh, The killer has now put on the cop uniform, and is now... Like, dressed up as a cop. Gets into the building. Um, You get kind of like a scene of him messing with some kind of control panel that you don't really know what he's doing yet. 
Um, <laughs> Diane goes upstairs to like kind of take a break and to like change clothes for the show. Derek's still up there. Derek has a fucking hissy fit and leaves. I don't remember why. After Derek leaves, the killer comes into the room wearing like a weird fucking like track suit and a kill like a clown mask for some reason. That makes absolutely well, I mean, why not? But some it, nights you just want to dress up, you know? Yeah, why like the the one thing that like I thought it was interesting that like pretty much from the get go you see the killer's face in this movie. It wasn't like he was wearing a mask. But, yeah, they, they do not hide him from you at all. At like, the same time, I don't know why the fuck he's wearing a mask at this point. Because at this point, you find out that the killer is Richard, Diane's husband. Dun dun. <laughs> the like, I don't know why he entered the room. Wearing this, I don't know why he's in the room wearing this clown <laughs> clown mask because it's not like she's just, not gonna fucking know. It's, just to try and freak you out while you're watching, so he pulls off the mask and it's like, oh my god. I fucking hate this movie. Um, Isn't that a good? Uh, it's very late Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah, this was like, this, oh, this well, was, obviously, that's what it was. Duh. This was, uh, what, Lady in the Water? Is that his fucking movie? I never saw that one. It was the fucking happening. Was, or... the, was the twist that we were all underwater the whole time? Yes. It was <laughs> basically the shape of water, but the twist is that, like... No the, fish man gets fucked. The entire time, everything's been underwater instead of on land. Like, uh, like... Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> I was joking. That's, that's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, I feel like we could probably cover an M. Night Shyamalan movie on here and just, like, be oh my God. the whole time. I want to watch The Village. I know it's plot twist, but it sounds so dumb. I need to see it in action. Uh, yeah, all I know about the village is the plot twist, and that a beanie that made me be like, I don't want to ever watch this movie. <laughs> um, so Richard's in the room. There's a cop guarding her door. When he goes to leave, he's just like, "What the fuck are you doing in there?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm her husband. Like her manager let me in, or whatever." And the cop immediately is having none of it, like, thinks something is fishy about it, and calls the other cops to, like, check in on the backstory or whatever. Um, Diane goes to get in the elevator with Richard. Uh, Richard basically fucks with the elevator so that she like i don't know like some something fucking happens here with the elevator i had like a fucking immediately blocked it out of my mind this was after i woke up from my nap so <laughs> i was still kind of groggy there's something like he's basically got somehow something he's doing is controlling the elevator this is where it crossed over with mission impossible <laughs> and they had john renault on top of the elevator like trying to shut it down it's fucking weird because you get all of these shots of just like, like weird, weird, like he's just like putting like a soldering iron into like circuits or something. And it makes no sense, but it's supposed to be that he's like got control of the elevator. Is that, is that not how solder works? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how solder works. And as somebody whose dad has worked on elevators his entire life, that is not how elevator control panels work either. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe you. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Nathan's elevator corner. Yeah, I'm gonna just ask my dad. I've <laughs> I've ridden like on the top of elevators with him. It's fucking weird. That sounds horrifying. It's, Mission Impossible made me really never want to do that. It's pretty terrifying, but also like kind of fascinating. But that's we're an elevator podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> this is Welcome elevator, everyone. Elevator talk with Nathan and Kit. Elevators and Aquaman. I wonder if there's an. Like, you think there's a podcast out there about elevators? There has to be. There's like, a podcast for everything. There's like, yeah, I'm I'm looking that up as soon as we're done. <laughs> I will listen to at least an episode of an elevator podcast. Um, 
Um, so some something happens where Richard ends up in the elevator with Diane, and basically like, oh, I think he like when she's in the elevator like by herself, he's like fucking with it, and like, cause when he goes in, she's like on the ground, and he basically like goes in and then just immediately starts like playing these kill tapes for her. And, like she finds out that like he's the one who was killing these people and essentially because he is crazy and used to be in the sanitarium that like he killed the nurse in and that he's somehow been like I don't know like uh, like his like Diane treats him and Derek like shit and yes. he, he said he's fed up direct quote and he's he was real mad that she did not listen about Derek getting the the part in the whatever movie or whatever dumb shit he it was tried something, for. Something like, like Aliens in America or some shit. I forgot to write down the name of it. It was some real dumb sci-fi-ish title. Um, he also like says some shit about how like she emasculates him and Derek. And then he goes God into this forbid. fucking spiel about how like women are garbage or something. It was real dumb. He then basically like ties a chain, like handcuffs her, ties a chain around her arms and like upper part of her torso, attaches it to the bottom of the elevator, and like, immediately starts raising it. And his plan is that he's going to raise her to the top of this building and then raise her down to squash her with the elevator. But he wants her to think about it all the way up and then all the way back down. Stupid. Which Men are dumb, what is up? what I learned from this movie. <laughs> I already knew was, that, but it was just reteaching me. 100% accurate. Um, it also seems like the dumbest possible death imaginable and it also seems like this elevator takes entirely too long going up and down like it seems well, like well this... he just soldered the slow button <laughs> down some <laughs> shit i don't know so, i'm not an elevator scientist you should be kit science corner this <laughs> I... week kit elevator scientist <laughs> forget it's a sweet title kit heart elevator scientist <laughs> I would watch that. My TV God, show. this elevator's too slow. <laughs> Just a forty-five minute fucking drama every week. <laughs> it's like uh, ER, just yes. operating on elevators. <laughs> Christ alive! Give me more solder. Oil starts shooting out of it and shit. You're like, oh no, we gotta save it. <laughs> um, so the cops show up as the elevator is coming back down. There's a shootout between Richard and the cops. One of the cops shoots the control panel and the elevator stops, saving Diane. Richard flees upstairs, goes to the roof, uh, puts on the clown mask, recites what I believe is Shakespeare, and then immediately jumps off the building and dies. Derek shows up and rubs his face all over his dad's dead body and takes the mask and it's real fucking creepy. Like everything else, Derek has done in this movie. I don't know if you've I don't know if you picked up on this, but Derek's a real fucking weirdo. It's it's real weird that he went from like this to killer clowns in outer space. Because <laughs> he's just like it's like absolutely nothing alike. Um, Diane is taken out in an ambulance. The she gets put in the ambulance, and the driver's like, "All right, let's go," and it cuts to. Derek in the clown mask driving the ambulance. My set, God. Setting up, I assume, what is supposed to be a sequel. Or just like a general, like, oh, she's going to get killed at the hospital or something. I don't know. But then you get the New Year's Evil theme song again during the credits. And that's the end of this garbage movie. They should have done it to where, like, each sequel was a different holiday. So, like, the next one is uh, Valentine's Day. And then once Derek is foiled, like, he retreats until 
like St. Patrick's Day, and that's when he tries to strike again and kill his mom. <laughs> I would watch that. Kind of like how Halloween was supposed to just be like, and like sort of anthology film or whatever, where it was going to be like a yeah. different thing each time. I guess that was just all going to take place on Halloween, though. But just do one continuous story that takes place on a holiday because Derek's a fucking idiot. And he's just like, ha ha, this is the right time to strike. Labor no day. one will be paying attention on April Fool's Day. This is Arbor or Day. Or whatever fucking holiday is in May. I just want to see the one where it's Arbor Day and he's killing people with trees. <laughs> or like Labor Day and he's just killing people wearing white. Oh man, that's one thing we should have done for uh, the Christmas episode. There is a really good killer Christmas tree short film. Oh, really? What's it called? Do you know? Uh, oh, I gotta man. look it up. I felt like I thought about like, cause there was like a, I saw some like Christmas shorts that I was like, oh, maybe we could do an episode of like a handful of those, but we had to do Santa Slay, which was much better. Treevenge. <laughs> of course. That's, it's perfect. It's I, absolutely perfect. Highly recommended. There's a... It may not still be on there. Shudder had a short when I first signed up for it that was like something about like, like this like babysitter and a kid carving a jack-o'-lantern. And like I think they like eat the pumpkin seeds while they're cut, like carving it. And then like the pumpkin... Like the jack-o'-lantern, pumpkins, like whatever... Like get their revenge by like bursting out of the like their bellies or some shit. It was crazy, <laughs> but it was kind of good. And it was uh, just... if you like, oh, go on. No, Sorry. I was gonna say it was. Just, I was just saying it was pretty interesting. Like take for like a little four minute short. Yeah, if uh, if you watch Treevenge and like it, I also recommend Killer Cart. <laughs> Is that about a killer shopping cart? Yep. Amazing. Several killer shopping carts. Uh, shopping carts are sick of human shit and sick of being left out in uh, parking lots <laughs> to get hit by cars. So they lock some uh, teenagers in a grocery store and start murdering them. I am fully on board with more movies about like killer inanimate objects. 100%. Like Anything where it's just an inanimate object that's like, oh, well, it's just sick of people treating it like shit. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. I got- Go ahead and murder them. I got Return of the Killer Tomatoes on Blu-ray from my mom for Christmas, and I'm waiting to watch it. Like I got like a shit ton of movies because I have a week of vacation coming off. That like all I'm gonna do is watch shit and not leave my house. So I've just been like holding off on watching it, but that's one I can't wait to watch because that's that's the one that like I remember more fondly than Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, where it was like what the one like the cartoon was based Racism off of. Racism Power Hour. Yes. <sighs> Where it had like the weird like, so, like I think I, if, if if it's what I remember and like I know it's what the cartoon was based off of, because it's got like, um, like the weird. And they all have like faces and yes, George Clooney's in it. Yeah, it's where they get like the like, they get into the, like all the stuff. Like they all have faces and like personalities and shit, kind of like gremlins. But like they have the weird like one tomato that I think can like turn into a person or some shit. At least that's how it was the cartoon. I don't know. I'm excited to watch that. And I got like all four Toxic Avenger movies I'm gonna rewatch. That's gonna be sick. <laughs> I've also only been watching Child's Play movies for like the last three days. Yeah, you texted me about uh, Bride of Chucky the other night, so I watched the original Child's Play last night. And I was like, eh, it's kind of a Christmas movie. I'll just watch that. Yeah, there's snow. <laughs> We one yeah. hundred. Like Chucky was a Christmas present or whatever, right? I don't remember we his ab- birthday. We absolutely have to do Bride and Seed of Chucky on here. Oh yeah, Seed of Chucky is fucking, fucking unbelievably nuts. good. I like. I fell asleep with it on today, and it's one of those movies that like it doesn't go back to a home menu. It just like repeats on a loop. Oh it's, wow! So it played for like hours while I was asleep. <laughs> You just wake up like in the middle of one part, and we're like, "What the hell is happening yeah, here?" Wake up to Chucky jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, movie fucking rules! I started 
uh, Curse of Chucky right before we started this, so I'm gonna watch that in Cult when I get done. Uh, I didn't really grab any news, but I know there's only one one news thing that I know and care about. Well, there was two I was gonna bring up. I'm assuming yours is about us. Yep. Yes, it looks fucking amazing. Oh my god, I I watched the trailer like four or five times. Yes. <laughs> Jordan Peele is like, there's like a lot of pretty cool stuff going on in horror movies at the moment, but like, I'm fully on board with like what Jordan Peele is doing, and I look, I, I'm kind of stoked that he's like, it's, I at least with his stuff, because I guess of like his like celebrity or whatever. I'm glad he's not just doing, like, remakes and shit, or, you know... Yeah. Reboots. I get. I mean, he's doing, like, the Twilight Zone, but that actually kind of sounds legitimately cool. I kind of... I'm pretty interested to see his take on the Twilight Zone, but, like... I hope that... I hope, like, he can usher in, like, a... Like a, a mainstream horror kind of... I don't know. Renaissance is a dumb word, but, you know, like, maybe getting more like mainstream original horror movies instead of just like, well, here's a remake of something that happened in Japan like six months ago. Um, Yeah, this trailer looks fucking awesome. I'm pretty excited to see this movie. I'm so mad that I got five on it is so creepy. (laughs) I've had it stuck in my head like for the past two days and I just, I get chills. I'm like, ah, oh, no, it's, it's creepy now. I can't, I can't do it. I don't want to sing it. <laughs> I was just stoked that like, Umbaku from Black Panther is like the dad in it. Oh my God. He, he's so good. Yes. And I'm excited to see him in a leading role. Yes. Um, yeah, more, more stuff from Jordan Peele is a good thing in my opinion. 100%. I'm I'm super down for anything he does at this point. Yeah. I uh I binged all of Key and Peel I don't know, like maybe six months ago. And I still think maybe the funniest thing I've ever seen is their football player names. <laughs> and especially quattro, the, quattro. the one guy is just like name is just like something construction noise. <laughs> like, <laughs> it made me laugh so hard. I was a big fan of the artist formerly known as Mouse Cop. <laughs> oh, God, they're fucking geniuses. And Hingle McCringleberry. <laughs> uh, I would do it like we should just, I would just fucking spend the next hour talking about just the names from that. That and the fucking two characters that are always talking about, like the, the valets talking about movies. <laughs> Liam Neeson's? <laughs> Oh god, that show is so good. Um, the only other news story I had that like it happened like right after we recorded, I think Santa Slay, where they, I guess there was like an aliens Instagram account that started posting pictures, uh, of this yeah. teasing a, like a possibly a TV series with Amanda Ripley, mm. which I'm incredibly on. curious what it could be. It's, I think, like, I don't know, I saw, like, kind of well before this, like, when, like, with all the shit that's going on with, like, the Disney Fox deal, I think they basically have said that, like, the Ridley Scott movies are done, which is a bummer that, like, you're never gonna get to that point with, like, Prometheus leading up to Alien now, which, like, I don't, I would, like, I know a lot of people... We're not into those movies, but I liked them, and I was kind of interested to see at least that progression into what it was going to get when it hit, like, the Alien movie. They they all had really solid ideas that were lacking in execution, so I still am super curious to see what, you know, Ridley Scott's final I, film would have been for it, you know? I feel like, I like Prometheus a lot, and I think that's a movie that I think... I think would have been better if what it actually is wasn't revealed prior. Like, I think people going into it and being like, it's an Aliens movie was a mistake. 
Like, I think if you went into that movie, if you went saw that movie in a theater, and just, like, you got to the end where that weird fucking proto-xenomorph creature popped out, I, I would have fucking lost my shit. And I think it would have worked a lot better as, like, that surprise. But I think having having it be, like, marketed as, like, a prequel to Aliens was a mistake. And I feel like Alien Covenant just, like... I think the backlash with Prometheus, like, the studio got involved a little too much, and that's how you got Alien Covenant instead of what was supposed to happen, because from my understanding is it was like, there was Prometheus, and there's supposed to be a movie in between Prometheus and Covenant that is like, what happened to, um, I can't think of her name, but, um, Michael Fox. That was the, uh... Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Michael Fassbender. New me replaces character. Yeah. Um, which I I don't know. I I feel like that. I think that movie kind of fails a bit for me based on like it just had, like whatever happened. Like it had to have been a lot of studio like studio interference because it just feels like they went too much into like a from like just like a weird sci-fi movie into straight up like aliens. And I don't know. But I'm on board with Michael Fassbender being creepy and flirty with himself, so... One million percent. <laughs> that... He is fucking great in those movies, but, you know... Everything else aside, I'll watch him do pretty much anything with those movies. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of interested to see... Especially if they're gonna bring, like, Amanda Ripley into... Something. I'd be pretty excited to see what they're gonna do with that. So, hopefully there's some more news on that somewhat soon. Um, so, next week, Kit recommended uh, we watch The Evil Within. I have no idea what this movie is about. Uh, but, based on Kit telling me about it before we started recording, it sounds bonkers. It... Uh, I wish I remembered the plot better off the top of my head, off the top of my head, but uh, IMDb sums it up as the sadistic tale of a lonely, mentally handicapped boy who befriends his reflection in an antique mirror. This demonic creature orders him to go on a murderous rampage to kill the people he loves most. Yeah, that's and nice. that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a totally insane backstory for its making. It took like 15 years. It we'll we'll get into it next week, but it's it just sounds absolutely nuts. Yeah, I feel like the backstory alone is going to be worth covering it. 1000%. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, that is I think you said streaming on Prime. Yes. Yes, yeah, so that'd be on Amazon Prime. Um that's pretty much, I think, all I got. Don't watch New Year's Evil. It was terrible. Yeah, find something better to do with your New Year's. Just, uh, <laughs> just fucking... That's not how you want to start off a New Year, is with New Year's Evil. Go on YouTube, look up New Year's Evil soundtrack, and just listen to the person who made, like, the 50-song fucking playlist with just the theme song in it, and just play that on repeat. It that is a much better way to spend your time. Somehow. Um, <laughs> Somehow that's the better option. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at I Hope You Suffer, on Instagram at I Hope You Suffer Podcast, Facebook at I Hope You Suffer Pod. You can email us, I Hope You Suffer Podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can always send us movie suggestions. For the most part, we usually like start recording and we're like, uh, what are we going to watch next week? So, you get, Always open to whatever yeah. garbage you have seen. Tell us something good to watch. We will probably Not watch too good, it. though. Well, you know. Good in the form <laughs> of like how Killer Clowns from Outer Space is good. Yeah, but also, give like, us something crazy. Give us something better than New Year's Evil. Yeah. I have a feeling that like... We need to just start ignoring, like, early 80s, late 70s slasher movies, because they're all pretty much like this. 
just slow. Yeah, we need to get get into the inanimate objects coming to life game. Get That's the ticket. Maximum overdrive. Ticket, right. I will tease that uh, Katie, who is going to be our resident Stephen King expert, uh, I told her about my idea to where we just do like a, an episode where we just kind of discuss both It movies. And she bought the book and is now going to start reading the novel. So whenever she fucking finishes that in like nine years, we will do that. <laughs> Cause I was I was able to power through it in two weeks. So, Katie, that's your that's your goal. Good luck. Yeah. So I just told her whenever she gets done with that and like let me know, we could all just fucking like revisit the movies and stuff, and we'll do something with that. Because I bought I bought both. I've been waiting to watch the new one until we do that. So I'm kind of interested. I I don't think I'm going to hate it, but I also kind of don't think I'm going to enjoy it as much as I enjoy the original miniseries. You don't think you'll like it enough to go get a tattoo of it? <laughs> it's, it's fucking nerds getting it tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> um, For those that don't know, I have an it tattoo. Yeah. Or make fun of me. I have, I have a life aquatic tattoo. I can't say anything. <laughs> That's not one I would have guessed. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a very diverse character, Kit. You're out there living that life aquatic. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, all right, I hope you suffer, but why? But why?